5 Reasons People Might Chant Mantras, By Krishna's Mercy Narayan Praha Sarve Na Kutashchan Bibhyati Swarga Pvarg Narkesh Api Tulyarth Darshana Quote, Devotees solely engaged in the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayana, never fear any condition of life. For them the heavenly planets, liberation and the hellish planets are all the same, for such devotees are interested only in the service of the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam, 6.17.28 1. Removal of Distresses I have been under a lot of pressure lately. I have these pains all over my body. People say that it is the result of aging, but I feel something else is going on. I am easily agitated. It is almost the opposite of what they say about Mahadeva. He is a Shatosha because he is easily pleased. Someone suggested the chanting of mantras. They gave me one to chant. I had a little difficulty pronouncing the Sanskrit words at first, but I am getting the hang of it. I think it is helping. I have to find a proper time and place. As long as no one bothers me, I am able to get something from the process. It is making a positive difference. 2. Purification we chant these mantras to purify the atmosphere. There is something important about to take place. You can say this is ritualistic, that we are following something weird or possibly outdated, but I like the process. You find the same taking place throughout history. It was an important part of my childhood. The names within the mantras are important. There is potency to the sound. You should give it a try, if you don't believe me. 3. Concentration This is desperately needed. The way the world is today, everyone wants instant satisfaction. Food delivery in under an hour. One day shipping for online orders. Viewing content on demand. Search results returned in less than a second, covering millions of printed pages of information. These mantras help me to concentrate. It seems to be the only time during the day when people are not bothering me. I can complete a single task, at a single time, without being interrupted. That period of concentration is vital for proper mental health. 4. Upliftment I feel as if I am being transported to another level. A different dimension, if you will. That other place feels like where I belong. Like I was always there, but due to misplaced desires or an unfortunate series of events I had to leave. Well, I have found my way back. If only temporarily, at least it is something. I want to stay in that place all the time. Don't ask me what any of the words mean. I only recently became proficient enough at pronouncing the words. I am now confident with this mantra, which is everything to me. 5. Appreciation This tends to be the mood of the devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The mantras are indeed powerful. They do call out to important personalities. There is potency to the sound. There is healing, upliftment, place shifting, concentration, and a host of other benefits. In devotional life, there is continuous appreciation. There is a vow to continue to service. Attachment to the Maha Mantra, for instance, can be summarized as follows. Shri Krishna and his energy, I call out to you in a vow to serve without interruption. I will never stop. You can place me in heaven or hell. You can heal my current ailments or you can increase their intensity. You can make me well respected in the world or you can bring everlasting shame and infamy. It does not matter. I will continue to serve. This is due to your qualities. I am forever grateful for what you have given to me in this precious human birth. Is one reason any better than the other? Does the justification really matter? 
The only difference is that if a person is looking to take from God and important personalities, once they get what they want there is the tendency to leave the process behind. The cause and effect chain is only natural. When approaching from the angle of appreciation, there is nothing that the object of worship can do to stop the outpouring of affection. This is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has declared the standard of devotion of the gopis of Vrindavan to be the highest. A saintly person will always chant the holy names, whether in prominence or obscurity. Whether as part of a vibrant community of like-minded well-wishers or in total and complete isolation, the mantra passed down to them is their life and soul, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In closing, some for ailments to heal, others transported to feel, some looking for concentration, others with fixed determination, on this thing or that getting, but devotees in appreciation setting, such that nothing ever to stop, if in heaven or bellow to drop.